you for joining us on Face Facts Forum. Our question for today is, should Christians observe the Sabbath? As we seek this answer, let us establish a foundation with additional questions. Question number one, was there a Sabbath at creation? The answer is no. God's rest at creation created a seventh aeon, a seventh day, an immeasurable period of time unknown to man. The evidence before us was recorded by Moses in Genesis chapter 1. The stages of creation. God created light, photon, the fundamental particle of visible light. And the evening and the morning were the first day. Genesis 1 verse 5. God created the sky. And the evening and the morning were the second day. Genesis 1 verse 8. God created earth and vegetation. And the evening and the morning were the third day. Genesis 1 verse 13. Day 4 is our crown witness. I will read the testimony of our brother Moses. And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years, and let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. And God set them in in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day. Genesis 1 verse 14 to 19. Let us take a closer look on this fourth day. Although God created light, singular, on the first day, it is on the fourth day, He divided it into the sun, moon, stars to determine signs, seasons, days, years. All of these are in the plural. Note, this is God's fourth day. Days, years, and seasons cannot happen within a 24 hours creation day. The sun, moon, and stars began to mark days and years during God's fourth day. For this reason, there were no hours during the third, second, and first days. Because the sun, moon, and stars, man's universal clock, was never created until God's fourth day. God created time for man during his fourth day. For this reason, we know that the days of creation were not 24-hour days. Let us continue the sequence of creation. Fifth, God created animals. And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. Genesis 1 verse 23. God created mankind and gave him commands on the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Genesis 1 verse 31. Observe, God created light on the first day and gave it function on the fourth day. God created the sky on the second day and filled it on the fifth day. God created land and vegetation on the third day and then created a garden and placed man in it on the sixth day. So what about the seventh day? Take note, there is no evening and morning for the seventh day. Yet, there is an evening and morning for the first day, second day, third day, fourth day, fifth day, and the sixth day. But there is no evening and morning for the seventh day. The phrase does not exist because we are still in God's unclosed seventh day. It remains unclosed because it is in it Adam and Eve sinned. And it is in this seventh day we will be redeemed. Notice that the same tree of life in Genesis is the same tree of life at the end of time in the book of Revelation. Here is the verse. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. Revelation 22 verse 14. In other words, in contrast to disobedient Adam and Eve, those who are in obedience will have the rights to the tree of life and be permitted to enter heaven. The same tree of life in the beginning is the same tree of life at the end of time because we are still in God's seventh day. God's rest at creation created a seventh day, not a Sabbath day. There was no Sabbath day in creation. Question number two. When was the Sabbath given to Israel as a covenant? The Sabbath was given to Israel after they left Egypt, according to Moses. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. 
And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because that in it he had rested from all his work which he had made. Genesis 2 verses 2 and 3. The past tense in the preceding verses informs its reader that the establishment, blessing, and setting aside of the seventh day to be kept as a Sabbath covenant was not at creation but later. God gave this covenant to Israel after they left Egypt. The Sabbath that was the Sabbath was not a day but a covenant that was kept on the seventh day. God imposed this on the generation that left Egypt as a token to remember him as creator. As God rests at creation, they too should rest and reflect on him. Here is the verse. Wherefore, the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath, to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations. Here is the clincher now. For a perpetual covenant. Here is the proof. The Sabbath is a covenant. It is a sign, a token, a covenant between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. Exodus 31, 16 and 17. In the second instance, God imposed this same covenant on the generation that would enter the promised land. The first generation that came out of Egypt wandered and died in the wilderness because of disobedience and rebellion. Therefore, their children, the second generation, led by Joshua and Caleb, would enter the land. Just before entering the promised land, however, Moses told the second generation that the patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, did not receive the Sabbath covenant. Here's the verse. The Lord our God made a covenant with us in Oreb. The Lord made not this covenant with our fathers, but with us, even us, who are all of us alive here this day. Deuteronomy 5, verse 2 and 3. Unlike the first generation, the second generation would observe the Sabbath covenant to remember God as deliverer, not creator. Here's the verse. And remember that thou wast a servant in the land of Egypt, and that the Lord thy God brought thee out thence through a mighty hand and by a stretch out arm. Therefore, or for this reason, the Lord thy God commanded thee to keep the Sabbath day. Deuteronomy chapter 5, verses 2, 3, and 15. Unlike the first generation, the second generation would observe the Sabbath covenant to remember God as deliverer, not creator. And remember that thou wast a servant in the land of Egypt, and that the Lord thy God brought thee out thence through a mighty hand and by a stretch out arm. Therefore, or for this reason, the Lord thy God commanded thee to keep the Sabbath day. Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 15. The Sabbath was a covenant given to Israel after they left Egypt. No one before them received any such covenant. Let's look at our third question. Did Jeremiah prophesy that the Sabbath covenant would be replaced? Absolutely yes. Israel broke all of God's commandments, yet according to Jeremiah, God would only replace, not remove, the covenant given after the Exodus which was embedded in the Ten Commandments. Here is the verse. Behold, the days come, said the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break. Jeremiah 31, 31 to 34. Although God made many different covenants with persons such as Noah, Abraham, Moses, David, and others, he said that there were only two principal ones, the old and the new. Here's the verse. For if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second one. Hebrews 8 verse 7. Now, brothers, sisters, friends, everyone listening, did you? Did you hear that? Did you really hear that? Let me read it again. For if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for a second covenant. There is a need for a second covenant because the first one was broken. Let us continue the reading. For finding fault with them, the Israelites, he said, Behold, the days come, said the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel, and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand 
to lead them out of the land of Egypt because they continued not in my covenant and I regarded them not, said the Lord. Haven't you noticed? This is the same prophecy uttered by Jeremiah. Both Jeremiah and the Hebrew writer are confirming the same prophecy and its fulfillment. They are not saying that the covenant will be removed. No, they both agree that it is a replacement of the covenant made at Sinai. The writer of Hebrews continues, In that he said, a new covenant he had made the first old, now that which decayed and waxed old is ready to vanish away. Hebrews 8 verses 7 to 13. So there is an old covenant and there is a new covenant, the Old Testament and the New Testament. Our fourth and final investigative question is, did the Holy Communion replace the Sabbath covenant? The answer is resoundedly, yes, the Holy Communion is the new covenant. Jesus and his disciples lived during the Old Testament. This is because the New Testament began with Jesus' death, not at his birth or with the book of Matthew. Here's the verse. For where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. For a testament is of force after men are dead. Otherwise, it is of no strength at all while the testator liveth. Hebrews 8, sorry, Hebrews 9, verse 16 and 17. The fact that Jesus is the testator, we must look to him for the establishment, blessing, and sanctification of the new covenant. It is evident that Jesus converted the Jewish Passover to the Christian's holy communion. Here's the verse. And as they did eat, Jesus took bread and blessed and break it and gave to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them. And they all drank of it, and he said unto them, This is my blood of the New Testament, the New Covenant, which is shed for many, not just Israel alone, but for many. Mark 14, verse 22 to 24. In fulfillment of Jeremiah's prophecy, Jesus declared that the Holy Communion is the New Covenant. God did not need to return to Mount Sinai, resurrect the two tablets to inscribe the new covenant. Twice he said that Jesus would do that at Jesus' baptism and transfiguration. Here are the verses. Thou art my beloved son, in thee I am well pleased. This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear he him. Matthew chapter 17 verse 5 and Luke 3 verse 22. Then after his anointing, Jesus said, This is the new covenant. Jesus said it, I believe it. His body, his blood, represented by the Holy Communion, is the new covenant. The Holy Communion replaced the Sabbath covenant. For this reason, Christians should not say that Sunday is their Sabbath. Sunday is not a covenant. The Holy Communion is. Let us compare the old and new covenants. One, the Sabbath was to remember deliverance from Egypt. The Holy Communion is to remember deliverance from sin. Two, the Sabbath Covenant was an agreement between God and Israel alone. The Holy Communion is an agreement between God and all mankind. Three, in the Sabbath, mankind externally examined one another to determine righteousness. In the New Covenant, each person must examine himself or herself with the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Fourth, in the Sabbath covenant, the unrighteous before God who kept the Sabbath was permitted to stone the righteous for not keeping the Sabbath. In the New Testament, in the New Covenant, the New Will, each person conducts a self-examination. The unworthy who takes the Holy Communion can reap damnation on themselves. The Bible said that some die or some get sickly. After reading and listening to the evidence, let us return to the question on the floor and the reason for the conclusive answer. The question is, should Christians observe the Sabbath? The answer is no. And here are the reasons in summary. The Sabbath was not given at creation and the days of creation were not 24 hour days. The Sabbath was given after the Exodus as a covenant between Israel and God alone. Jeremiah prophesied that that Sabbath covenant would be changed. 
the Holy Communion replaced the Sabbath covenant. Just as how there is no Holy Communion in Judaism, there is no Sabbath in Christianity. A person cannot take the Holy Communion and at the same time be keeping the Sabbath. They do not coexist. For if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. In that he said a new covenant, he had made the first old. Hebrews 8, verse 7 to 13.